Okay. Take two. <laughs> uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, History of the Bard. Creepy Bard. We took a break for a little while. Uh, sorry about that. Got picked up for a tournament. It was awful. Got ruined. But we're back now, and everything should be fine. A um, couple of announcements here and there. Um, this guy needs to just shut his goddamn hole. Holy shit, I am super grumpy right now. Did not expect this to be as big a pain in the ass as it's being. Um, I'll let him talk. I'll be back. The Roman Empire. After suffering terrible punishment and humiliation at the hand of the Roman invaders, you rallied your people in a bloody and terrifying revolt. Legions fell under your chariot wheels, and the city of London burned. While in the end, the Romans retained ownership of the Isles, you alone made Nero consider withdrawing all troops and leaving Britain forever. Oh, sleeping lioness, your people desire that you rise and lead them again. Sweet, we got him to shut up. Awesome. All right, so, like I was saying, a couple of announcements. Uh, one, classes have started back up. This doesn't mean that much. Aside from the fact that we'll be toning it down for a little while. I hit the wrong button. Uh, we'll be toning this down for a little while and just doing the uh, Wednesday history shows for the foreseeable future, basically. Um, <clears throat> we have a lot of classes that are going to require um, a lot of research and you know things like that. And it's just going to be easier in general to deal with, just, just reduce the amount of things I have to research at any given point in time. Um, second announcement, I have set up to purchase a second monitor, so I'll be more easily capable of paying attention to you guys, basically. Um, the only problem is that for right now, even the laptop is fucking up, so I have no access to a second uh, monitor of any sort. So, I can't see chat, I can't see any of that, which makes me super super sad. I love seeing you guys and talking to you guys when you're in chat, but it can't be helped until I can get this laptop to stop blowing up in my face. Um, third announcement. Because classes are starting back up, uh, I actually will have more in-depth research coming up for a lot of these, especially since I'm currently talking to a bunch of the professors at my college to sort of figure out books that I just kind of need to have for research. Um, so after a week or so, not next week you won't see any change, but the week after you should see a little bit. Also a byproduct of the fact that I am starting classes, you will be seeing a lot of less linear content. We're not just going to be talking about things like, oh, this is Genghis Khan, or oh, this is Marco Polo, or oh, this is Boudicca. We're going to be talking about uh, all kinds of stuff. We're going to be talking about more in-depth ideas. Um, we will likely at some point come back to an idea I've been throwing around for a little while that I might write a thesis paper on um, about Romance of the Three Kingdoms and what it actually means um, regarding religious concepts. Uh, you know, more complicated ideas. Um, I still want to intersperse that with less complicated stuff. You know, things like, hey, this is who this person is. Hey, this is how this place was. Uh, just to give everybody else context, because I'm aware that not everybody is <clears throat> aware of some of the things that are necessary to know about to get the full context for certain ideas we'll be going over. So, if nothing else, we will at some point revisit um, the... Eastern philosophies, uh, sorry about that, the Eastern philosophies um, show that we did a little while ago. Uh, more specifically, we will be touching up at some point on Mongolian Buddhism and just Buddhism in general within the area. Um, so that ought to be a lot of fun. I don't actually know what I want here. Do I want... We don't have jungles, we have forests. Plus one food from camps wouldn't be bad, but we don't have too many camps. Uh, tundra without forests. 
we're gonna go with the camps one. Um, but yeah, so we'll be we'll be covering a lot more in depth stuff, um, just kind of in general. Uh, we will still be doing um, just a random gameplay uh, streams on occasion. The biggest thing with that, though, is the biggest caveat with that, I should say, is that these will be on a very when I get around to it and feel like it kind of situation. Um, anyone who's been paying attention for a little while noticed that I did a fuck ton of World of Warcraft content for a little bit and then just kind of stopped um, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, classes are starting back up. Uh, two, I have to deal with, you know, the magic thing. <clears throat> We're still working on that. Still refining deck lists and things like that. Coming up with ideas. And, uh, two, the expansion just isn't coming out yet. So, or isn't out yet. So there's just not a whole lot of, not a whole lot going on. Um, so I just haven't been playing it much. It's been kind of, kind of boring to me personally. But, uh... So there's that. Um, we did do, I suppose the other day, we did do uh, that review with our good friend, uh, Unicorn Muffin TV. That was a lot of fun. Um, you can check that out. Oh, God. Everything's being loud. Shut the fuck up. Okay, sorry. Hold on. The laptop is freaking out on me. Um, like I said... As of tomorrow, I'll have a second, a second monitor um, to make life a little bit easier, and that should make these specifically um, more bearable. But where was I? Um, yeah, there hasn't been a whole lot going on with World of Warcraft right now since the since the oh, this place is shitty. We're gonna double liberty because we always do. I don't know why, I just do. I like expansive empires. I like not having to trade for resources. But and like I said, we'll 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 get back to it. Um next Tuesday is when the expansion drops Legion. We'll be running around doing the death metal album cover of killing demons left, right, front, and center. That'll be fun. But uh unlike a lot of places, we're not going to devote our time to getting Legion content out, like, the second the servers come up. Um, again, I'm taking classes, so I have to go to those. And Warcraft's fun, but I'm a historian. I don't give a shit. Like, <laughs> I, it's fun to play, don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, if my choice goes, or my choice is between learn more about history from people who know what they're talking about to play a game that has interesting lore, but that's about it. I'm going to pay more attention to the history. That's just going to happen. Um, like I said, not to say that World of Warcraft's bad or anything like that. Just it's the way I'm looking at it for right now. Um, other than that, I covered the research materials that I'll have access to soon. That'll be nice. Um, yeah, I kind of went off my notes there and just sort of talked for a while. But, but this is what we're here for now. We're going to talk about it. Bodica. Queen of the Iceni Celts. She is a badass. But to talk about her, we have to talk about, I don't want to say an important thing, but something that stands out uh, in <clears throat> sort of scholarly concepts regarding her. Um, and that is that there's not a whole lot to go off for her. Um, the Almost the entirety, anyway. Of uh, Oh, I'll just get a free worker. Fuck it. I'll just change what that guy's working on then. Almost the entirety of what we know about her came from... Uh, uh, not disreputable, but like... Sketchy sources, I guess, is the best word I can come up with for that. Um, they... The two sources we have that reference Bodica are a man named Tacitus and another man whose name I can't remember, but I have in my notes later on, and we'll get to them specifically. But uh, they're Roman statesmen is the biggest thing. Um, not that there's anything wrong with Roman statesmen, but when you're writing about people who aren't your own people for your people, uh, you have a tendency to sort of 
tweak the facts a little bit, uh, make things a little bit more skewed in your favor. So, <clears throat> you know, take take a lot of this with a grain of salt, but there's a reason that I bring that up that, again, I'll talk about when we get to it. Um, but another thing we have to bring up is a lot of people, a lot of um, people outside of the history world know about Bodica not because her history is very well explained or extensively talked about. Uh, they know about her almost exclusively from a painting done by John Opie. Uh, and he did the painting Bodica Haranguing the Britons uh, back in 1795, uh, according to the British Museum, which I'm inclined to believe is accurate. Um... I don't have the, the the image to uh, like put in a corner for you or anything like that. If you want to find it, um, I would recommend that you go to the British Museum's website and take a peek at it for yourself. Uh, I, <laughs> the problem with that is that their spelling uh, pretty much hinges on on I guess Middle English, uh, Old English spelling, maybe High English. I don't know. English that isn't common. It's not the it's not the English we use anymore. So the spelling is absolutely all over the place. Just crazy bonkers. Um, but uh, a place that you can go to see it is Wikipedia on their page about Bodica. Um, if you're somebody who cares about making sure that uh, internet traffic numbers and things like that are accurate so that people can actually tell what people are interested in, I suggest if you can't find it on the British Museum's uh, website first, go to Wikipedia, steal the spelling of it, and just Google it. I think it's like the first thing that comes up um, on their site. But it's this very striking image of Bodica standing tall and imposing over a, cr a group of cowering bearded men who look up at her in awe and... Uh, you know, she's got her arms stretched out in this protective manner over two young women whom I assume... Uh, I haven't actually done any uh, done that much research on the image itself, but I have to assume that they are her two daughters, which play a pretty important role in, uh, in how she handles... Diplomacy, air quotes. Um, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Um, it's this really, it's this really striking image um, that you should definitely check out. And like I said, it's on the Wikipedia page. It's on the British Museum page. Um, anybody who actually gets a chance to go to the British Museum and take a look at this picture, I envy you. Uh, one of my my first loves when it came to uh, history before I threw myself wholeheartedly at things being weird, uh, before I threw myself wholeheartedly at Chinese and Mongolian ancient medieval history, or uh, was Celtic, um, I, I strongly sort of identify with the uh, Celtic heritage I have through Scotland, and, you know, I, I try to figure out as much of that as, as I can, but I digress. Um, so... I pointed you toward this painting. If you have a chance, go look at it. I'm not going to wait on you right now, but if this is on YouTube later and you hear this, pause, go to it. But uh, a lot of people, because of that painting, uh, they see this imposing woman, but they don't really have any context. And without context, you just don't get to know how incredibly badass this woman was. Um, and that's mostly, again, like I said... People just don't talk about Bodica or even the Celts all that much. Um, there's a bit of a resurgence in uh, the in in Scotland and the areas that the Celts uh, commanded power in, um, and Scandinavia, incidentally, uh, that area um, for the the religions of their ancestors, and. Uh, so because of news of neo-Druidism coming back, um, you know, neo-whatever-the-fuck 
fuck the Norse are calling their religion. I don't know. I, I haven't looked into that one as much. But uh, with neo druidism coming back and all of this, there's a lot of there's a resurgence in cultic and Celtic uh, interest, which I'll cover in another topic one day actually. Um, largely because it's particularly strong in Japan. Um, Celtic druidism has a lot of similarities to Japanese Shintoism that uh, strikes a chord with people over there sometimes. But, um, like I said, this woman, Bodica, is just a total badass. Um, as my history teacher, or one of my history teachers, my medieval history teacher actually right now would say, uh, she's very hot. But, um, so this is one of the only human beings ever to have made the Roman Emperor Nero just be like, wait a minute, hold on. Maybe we shouldn't just... Maybe maybe this is an area of the world that we don't need to touch. Uh, this isn't really... I didn't sign on for this. Um, he doesn't, because we are well aware that the Celts and Britain and everything still... Or, you know, all of that has happened. But comes damn close, and it's important to note that, uh, is Nero was insane. Uh, he's his own episode, just all wrapped up in a tiny Cthulhu-wrapped bow, uh, and I don't want to deal with that shit Even right now. Um, we will definitely talk about him later, especially if people have interest, so comment. Um, but... Where was I? Uh, just a second. I gotta figure out what I'm doing here. Uh, we already got a warrior. We could use another worker. And research. Let's go. I have no idea. I don't know what I want right now. Let's... We're, we're on the water. Let's go optics. We'll figure out sailing and optics and get that shit sorted out. Um, scouting. So... Like I said, he's his own story, um, but tonight, like I said, we are talking about one of the most badass and metal women in history. So, Bodica. She's queen of the, she was, anyway, queen of the Celtic Iceni tribe, which is in the east of what is now the United Kingdoms. Um, she was married to, oh, sorry got ahead of myself. So, a lot of stuff in her life is pretty, or before this part in her life. So far, so standard. She's a rich kid. Um, you know, does rich kid things. Uh, lives in an area and at a time where the wealthy are pretty well off. Marries into... I don't think that's a good spot. I'm not going to put her in the desert. That's awful. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. No, I would. I would love it. Put it here. Um, she she was married to a king, Prasitagus, um, a sort of. He was king of the Iceni tribe. That's like he he doesn't. I don't. I haven't really read that much on him. Um, he was actually an ally of the Roman Empire during his lifetime, which makes it interesting that eventually what happens with Bodica happens at all. But, getting ahead of myself again. Sorry, I get excited about this chick. She's really cool. So she's married to uh, King Prasitagus. Um, and he's alright. I uh, haven't done a whole lot of research on him specifically, because as far as I could tell, he just wasn't terribly impressive. Um, not a bad king, just not one that anybody cares about right now. Uh, didn't really do anything big and splashy that gets you in the history books. But, you know, things things get interesting uh, regarding Prasitagus on his deathbed, actually. He uh, leaves a will that pretty obviously states, as far as I can tell, that his kingdom is supposed to be left jointly to the Roman Emperor and Prasitagus's daughters. Um, how he ever intended for his daughters to share the throne or share the, the control of this entire kingdom with the Roman Emperor uh, 
No idea. Like I said, I haven't personally read what's going on there, but I, I can't imagine how that would work out. Doesn't make sense to me personally, but whatever. Um, but, you know, that's, that's what his will said. And it's pretty largely believed that the exact day that he died, Rome basically said, I don't give a fuck what you want. This is ours now. So they came in and they took it. They just conquered the Iceni. Well, annexed the Iceni. Didn't conquer them. They annexed them for the good of the people, so to speak. Um, but they didn't stop there. They didn't stop there at all, in fact. Uh, they they got pretty bad. How bad? Well, upon his death, they annexed his kingdom in its entirety. They flogged his queen, because reasons, I guess. Raped his two daughters, again, because reasons, I guess. And uh, on top of that, they also apparently brought debt or, or uh, you know, called in debts that Boudica owed to the Romans somehow. So, you know, definitely not what was in his will uh, by any strange translation of it. And this didn't sit well with a lot of people, namely the Iceni, uh, namely anybody who knew the Iceni because they didn't like Rome. Everybody who knew the Iceni was basically just in the British Isles. Um for the most part. And uh, certainly not Queen Bodica. She uh, had a bit to say about it. Definitely didn't like what was happening. Definitely didn't like being flogged. And uh, in about 60 Common Era, to guarantee the, uh, the annexation of this town... This not this town, this uh, area. Uh, the Romans did what they usually do, and they told one of their generals, "Hey, um, we just you know annex this place. Uh, it's out on the frontier a little bit. Would you mind going and you know sort of taking care of it for a while? You know, make this make this your home, uh, homestead yourselves, so to speak." Uh, and the man they got to do this, the man Emperor Nero decided needed to. Uh, take care of this area it was a man by the name of Gaius Suetonius Paulinius uh, to lead the frontier forces in this area. Um, so the idea was put somebody out there in retirement, give them land out there, and then they're protecting their home. Whoa, is Assyria new? I don't have Assyria, do I? This guy is boss. Where did you come from, buddy? I'm going to have to go through here and look through this. I haven't looked at this game in a while. Not since the last time we used it for a um, uh, word I'm looking for that I can't remember all of a sudden. Why is it so hard? Um, the last time we used it for a, a history with a bard. Got distracted. Anyway. So, yeah. This situation is largely just a win-win for the Romans. They get to take extra land, and if one of their guys die while they're out there, they have an excuse to just send the yeah, entire everybody out to kill that one in particular person. So, you know, it works out for everybody. Who is Roman? Um, but, Boudica didn't sit idly by while all of this was going on. She didn't sit down and just wait for the world to be taken from her. Da, 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 da. No. Boudica was a fucking boss. So, while Gaius is campaigning around in the area, she whips up the Iceni and the neighboring Trinovantes into this frenzy. And she goes out with her new army that she's gathered and ruins people. Just fucking ruins them. By all counts, by the time this campaign is done... Back in, like, 60 CE. Like, 60 CE. Not much is going on in this time frame. We don't have cars. We don't have trains. We don't have nothing. We can't move giant armies without much more than flag-waving and bullshit. She and her little band kill somewhere between seventy and 80,000 Roman soldiers. 
in their their march for this uh, this rebellion, so to speak. So while they're doing this, they tear through what is modern day Colchester, and the Romans are just fucking. They don't want anything to do with this right now. They're just fleeing. So they flee back. The Romans and uh, more specifically the Ninth Legion make a stand. Eventually, they pull back their forces to a small, recently constructed merchant town of Londinium. What is modern-day London? Because, God forbid, anybody rename stuff with your own titles and shit. But they, they hold off in Londinium. And in the resulting battle, Bodica and her rebel forces burn that motherfucking place to a cinder. As well as the neighboring city of what is modern-day St. Albans. Uh, in the raising and pillaging of these villages, you gotta remember, the, the people that she brought with her were this disjointed band of rebels and just generally all-around angry people. They took my dude, dicks. Anyway, uh, rebels and barbarians, so to speak. Um, that's a loaded term in and of itself, but we'll get to that later. Not today, but later. Um the barbarians, and just generally, you know, wild tribes. They're not well-trained soldiers. Her 100,000 untrained soldiers. That's all she had when she took out seventy to 80,000 Roman soldiers. This is what causes Nero to be like, maybe, uh, maybe this ain't a good idea. Maybe we, should, maybe we should pull this one back. Maybe we should just walk away and let them have it. But before he can actually make this order before you can say anything to convince people to, to stand down and leave the British Isles entirely. Gaius Polinius uh, rears his ugly head again. Well, I'm sure he's a very nice man. Very very attractive man, but that's not the point. Uh, he rears his head again and being pulled back a little ways, uh, gets his forces together, um, rallies them, gets them organized, and Holds back. Uh, do I have the name of the battle? I don't think I do, actually. That's disappointing. Um, but no. So Gaius Polinius managed to gather up the remaining Roman forces in Britain, and in a battle that you made an I haven't read too much on, but I really should have. I apologize. Uh, and I didn't write down the name. I feel so bad about that. Um, in a battle, he manages to drive back Bodica's rebels. Drive back the invading hordes, and in the end, sort of secure uh, the British Isles for ugh, the Romans. Now, this is where this is another one of those situ places where things get a little sketchy. So let's let's go with this because we have to have both, don't we? Hmm. Whatever. Uh, this is another place where things get a little sketchy. See, no one's actually a hundred percent sure. Uh, what happened to Bodica after this point. We have two relatively conflicting sources. Um, and they are Gaius Cornelius Tacitus and Cassius Dio, both of which, as was stated earlier, are Roman statesmen who were writing histor histories for the state, were writing histories just because they wanted to write histories, that sort of thing. Um, and as such, uh, while Tacitus is believed to have a little bit of first-hand experience with the situation, uh, both are regarded as, you know, sort of probably skewing things a little bit more in Roman favor. But I just want to point out that skewing things in Roman favor still involves kicking everyone's ass up until the point where they say, maybe we should get the fuck out of here and leave these guys alone. Oh my god. Celts are terrifying. Like, even an account favoring her enemies makes her sound like a total and complete badass. So, I can only imagine what actually happened uh, in her life. She had to be a very impressive young woman. And we see her legacy in wow. stuff today. Civilization V, she is one of the leaders. Uh, in fact... She's been one of the leaders for two or three games now. Um, she was, I know for a fact she was introduced in the, in Civilization IV in the Warlords? It was either Warlords or the Beyond the Sword expansion. Um, 
where she was introduced. Um, the Celts had already been a playable faction, and the... I don't know how much research they actually did on this. For a while, Civilization was using um, a character that they had kind of accidentally invented um, called Brennus. Brennus of the Celts. And a little bit further research um, shows that Brennus was, an act was not actually a name. Uh, Brennus was basically a title, like war chief or, uh, you know, just leader in general. Like, supreme leader, king, that sort of thing. Uh, he was just somebody, He was. Just, it was just a title given to somebody who was in charge of a given area. Um, so we know now that, you know, he he wasn't a person who existed. So they added in Queen Bodica um, as, you know, one of the leaders, which I think was, was pretty astute. And of course, when she was brought over in the Gods and Kings expansion for Civilization V, she was, of course, the only leader available to um, the Celts. We're going to get... We don't need one, but that's sad. Uh, in the spirit of things, talking about art at the beginning of this, we'll go ahead and grab the great artist. Um, it's not going to be a person we care about, but whatever. Uh, just make a great art. Who cares? And that is pretty much all the notes I've got. Um, again, these tend not to last long, so I'm never really that concerned about it, and it makes putting them on YouTube easier. So uh, I apologize that there has been no music. Like I said, we're posting it on YouTube, and I didn't feel like dealing with the in-game music. So there's that. But anybody who watches this later, thank you for watching. And like I said in the beginning of this, uh, research in the future will be much more in-depth um, as of probably two weeks from now. I will have a lot more research materials on hand. It'll be glorious. I'm so excited. And thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, comment, I would really like... I, I need comments. I want to know what you guys want to hear about. I get super excited about, you know, the the Mongolians and the Chinese and all of the intricacies of their existence and, you know, all of the, the Celts. Oh my god, I love the Celts. Just like, I get really excited about these things. We'll probably talk about the Punic Wars at some time, because uh, I think it's fucking metal. But, like I said, I get excited about these things, but if you guys want to hear other stuff, let me know. I will go around and do the research and, you know, make a video for you. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.